Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. If you are new here, I'm Jamie B. Thanks for stopping by. If you are already subscribed, then welcome back. So in today's video, I am going to be doing a beauty breakdown on how to apply foundation for beginners. It's going to be a detailed step-by-step. -step. It is not going to contain any concealer, blush, or anything like that. It is solely based on foundation. So if you're interested in how to apply foundation for beginners, then go ahead and keep watching. All right, so as I stated in the intro, this is going to be a detailed breakdown of how to apply foundation for beginners. So basically, I am going to put all my other stuff on, like concealer, contour, all that, but I am not going to be focusing on that at all. I am literally going to be focusing on foundation only. I have found that a lot of videos on YouTube that tell you how to apply foundation, you they take like five minutes to apply the foundation and then they move on to the rest of the makeup and they kind of do like a how-to for your base or for your full face. So blush, highlighter, all of that. I don't want to do any of that today. I'm focusing solely on foundation and how to apply it from steps A all the way to Z. So from going to the store, from your skin, all of that to actually applying it and where to apply it. So we are going to get started with that. So the first thing that I want to touch base on is going to be your skin type. Skin type is extremely important to know because there are all different types of foundation, which I will get into later in the steps. But the first thing I want to talk about is you have dry skin, oily skin, normal skin, combo skin. You have to figure that out ahead of time before picking out your foundation or even going to the store. You can talk to your dermatologist. You can go to an esthetician. Um, I Maybe Sephora employees, because I know that they get like a lot of classes and education on skin types. I wouldn't say Ulta, because I'm pretty sure they're just um, retail associates. So they may not know, they may have some knowledge, but they may not know as much as you need to know to figure out what your skin type is, but that is the first and most important thing. So in order to prep the skin, you have to determine your skin type. I am going to use my skin as a reference for this video just because obviously that's all I have. I don't have someone else's face at the moment. And my skin type is dry. So everything that I am going to be using will be for dry skin only. Um, some of it you can use for other skin types, but mostly it's going to be for drier skin types because that's what I am. So like I said before, make sure you figure out and determine what yours is before you move forward in your foundation routine. So in the prepping step, you want to make sure that you hydrate and moisturize your face. Um, I also shave my face. I use microderm um, razors. So if you want to see a video on how to do that or how I do that, go ahead and comment below and I can make one for you for that. But we're going to kind of skip into the moisturize, hydrate, all of that good stuff. So there are three different options that I use and you can use for hydrating your skin. I'm sure there are more, but these are the three that I, the three main categories that I wanna focus on. So you have a moisturizer, which is just your normal, thick, everyday moisturizer. You can get a water-based moisturizer. There's tons of different moisturizers. If you guys want a detailed skincare routine or detailed skincare items, then go ahead and comment below. But again, I'm trying to not make this video three hours long, so I'm just gonna give you the basics of everything other than the foundation. You can also use oils. Um, there's a lot of face oils right now in the market. I know in 2019 it was, became a really big thing, 2018, 2019. Um, Smashbox has some, Forselli has some, this is Drunk Elephant. And basically I like to use it to moisturize. If you have oily skin, I would kind of steer clear of that, but normal to dry, you're gonna be okay using this. So the next thing I wanna show you guys, um, there are serums. And I don't really have a serum to show you, but this one I just got in the mail from Influencer. This is the Tatcha, the Serum Stick Treatment and Touch Up Balm for eyes and face. And I did get it for free, so I do wanna say that this video is not sponsored, but this is definitely another alternative, and I'm gonna use this one actually in the video today, to prepping your skin underneath your primer. And this is just a serum stick, so basically, it's serum solidified. Um, and you can use this to touch up your face over your makeup, um, touch up some dry spots. I like to use, I've used it twice now, I like to use it underneath my makeup. I'm not a real big fan of putting creams or serums or anything like that on top of my makeup just because I feel like it can make it cakey. So I like to use that underneath and this is what I'm gonna use today, but usually I would go in with either the oil or the moisturizer depending on how dry I am. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead in with this stick and I'm just gonna focus it solely on like my drier area of my face I like to do here here so it helps it from creasing my concealer and foundation from creasing 
around my smile lines and I get really dry above my lip and below my lip. And if you have like dry patches like I have some over here, you can do it. So this can be an all over, this can be a spot um, treatment, it can be whatever you want. There are several different things you can use it for. You can use it to fill in to smooth. You can use it for hydrating and moisturizing. So there's a lot of different things that it does. I'm gonna put some on my forehead too because I have some lines up there. Um, but again, if you don't have something like this, moisturize, oil, whatever, just make sure you're hydrating and taking care of your skin because I can't stress that enough. We have all these full face routines and full face foundations and whatnot on YouTube, but we don't explain the severe importance of applying underneath, taking care, taking care of your skin. Makeup is only going to look as good as the skin underneath it. So that takes me to my next point. If you have textured skin, I have textured skin. Foundation can do a lot of things for you. It cannot remove texture. It cannot, it can go over the texture, but it can't cover up the texture. So basically when I put my foundation on, you can't see it on camera because it does smooth my skin very well. Um, but when you see, if you were to see me in person, you can still see these little textured bumps that I have. Those you have to kind of get taken care of by an esthetician or dermatologist. Foundation kind of can make that be seen more than without it actually. It can help with like coloring, it can help with like scars or acne, but the physical bumps of it, it cannot cover or erase. So just keep that in mind. When you're watching all these YouTube videos and you're like, my foundation is not as flawless as theirs. One, they're using a skin blur and two, they may not have texture. We're human, it's gonna happen no big deal. All right, so we're gonna go into primers and different things that can go under your foundation. So a couple of primers that I have um, is this one, this is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer and this is more of a hydrating, tacky primer. I really love this one for super dry skin, especially when mine gets really bad in the winter. And then you have the No Pore Bone Primer. This is a smooth and pore covering um, primer. This has a lot of silicone in it, I believe. And this is gonna be more for oily, to normal skin. I do not recommend this for dry skin. That's why I haven't really used it. Um, I don't have huge pores. I don't have that problem because I do have dry skin. So the more oily you are, the bigger your pores will be. So you definitely want to look into something like that. And then we have the Tatcha the Silk Canvas. I do use this one, but I wonder, I think this one might have a little bit of some kind of silicone base because it definitely has a filter finish. So it smooths things out. Again, it can smooth, but only so far. It will not remove the texture from your skin, but it does leave it more of a nice, smoother finish in the places where you might have a few bumps or bigger pores. So those are the primers that I wanted to talk about, and there are a ton of primers in the market. I wouldn't say it's 100% necessary to have under your foundation. If there's mixed reviews. Some people are all about it. Some people are like, I don't need it. I, for one, like it just because I feel like it gives me an extra barrier between my skin and the foundation and also an extra hydrating step, which is amazing. I'm actually going to go in with the Hydro Grip one and I just do like two pumps. The reason that this one is kind of my favorite is because one, it's so hydrating and two, it gets tacky. It feels almost like glue sometimes and it's really cooling when it comes out of the tube. Like I have it in my room and it's room temperature in here. But every time I pump it, it's so, so cooling. And you feel that? Like, no, you can't feel it. But if you hear that, like it's really tacky. And so what you're gonna do now, now that you have applied that, is you're going to let it dry completely. A lot of people make the mistake of going right in with your foundation, but you want it to be able to seep into your skin and do its job. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I want to talk about foundation types. Uh, formulas, finishes, and all of that good stuff, and picking your foundation. So let's go into formula types. So you have stick foundations, you have liquid foundations, which come in pumps, come in tubes, powder foundations, and then you have cream foundations, which I don't have any because I do not use them. 
Um, I don't recommend them. They're just not my favorite, like the ones that come in the little thing, you go like this, I don't like it. I usually stick to liquid or stick foundation, which I have found that Hourglass is my favorite. Some of them can be super thick, so keep that in mind. Um, liquid is the most common foundation I find. And then powder foundation, I only use to set my all over face and give it a little bit more coverage. So this is the MAC Studio Fix Foundation in NC40. It's a little bit light right now, um, but it's the only one I actually have at the moment. I do not recommend using powder foundation as your full coverage foundation. Um, you can, It's there's no rules against it. If you have oily skin, it may be better for you, but for me, specifically for my dry skin and texture, just rubbing powder all over my face is not what I want to do. <laughs> Alright, so now that we've talked about the formula foundations, before we move on to the next um, item, I do want to let you guys know that you can also do, like, this is the Max Strobe Cream, but they have liquid highlighters and liquid highlighter like lotions. Um, illuminating moisturizers and stuff that you can put on. I like to put this on because it gives me that glow underneath my foundation that I just lack because I have dry skin. Not everybody really likes this, but this is just a step that you can take to add more of a supple, beautiful glow underneath your skin. They have a ton of them, but MAC is definitely hands down my favorite in that category. All right, so there are also a couple finishes that you can also look at when you're in the store. So let's talk about when you're in the store looking for a foundation. This is all part of priming and getting ready to apply the foundation. You want to, one, match your foundation to your back of your hand. I see a lot of people a lot of the times will go in this area of their arm. The most that I have found or the best or closest match has been the back of my hands because they get the sun the most. These do not so this may be paler than your face. That's why I recommend using the back of your hand. So the next thing I also have my notes down here my eyes keep looking down because I just want to make sure I get it like really detailed and break down for you guys of what you need and how to do it properly so you can have beautiful foundation. So the next thing is the finishes. You have matte, dewy, luminous, and I want to say satin. There may be more, but those are the main that I know. I usually use um, matte, but not like super matte. So the ma Milk Makeup Blur, um, the Blur Liquid is a matte foundation, but it's not super duper matte. And then I like the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk and more dewy foundations. I know L'Oreal has a hydrating one I really liked, um, the Infallible. So depending on your skin type, again, or how your skin is at that moment is the finish that you're going to want. So just make sure you look into that and which one is gonna suit you and how it feels. You can always go into Sephora and Ulta, try them on your skin and see how they feel and how they wear before you buy them. So then that also takes me to coverage. You have light coverage, medium, medium to full coverage, full coverage, and then buildable. I am in between that buildable to full full coverage area. I just prefer that beautiful cohesive look. Um, if you don't want super thick makeup, then you can always go to a lighter coverage, but those are the options that you have. And again, I do urge you to go to Sephora, Ulta, or a makeup counter to be able to feel those products and how heavy or how light they are and how they're going to weigh on your face. The next and final thing in this priming step is going to be color selection. We talked about matching it to the back of your hands. However, I want to talk about undertones and all of that cool stuff. You have pink and cool undertones, which kind of go hand in hand. Then you have neutral, which are more green undertones. And then you have yellow and warm undertones. So there are many ways you can ask someone to help you at one of the beauty areas, or you can take a look. If you look at your veins, I don't know if you'll be able to see mine, but my veins look more green. If they look more green, then you're more of a neutral um, and more towards yellow as well. So the greener your veins look, the more warm you are. However, the more blue they look, the more cool tone slash pink undertones you have. So foundations come in not only a ton of shades, but they also come in different undertones. You want to make sure that you not only have a matching shade, but you also have a matching undertone. I am more neutral to warm. So applying your actual foundation. I'm going to go over different tools first before we actually apply it, and then we will move on to me actually putting it on my face. So the two tools that I use the most, you can use your hands. I don't recommend it. 
it's just it skews me out bacteria all that good stuff but you can use a brush of any kind um, make sure it is a foundation brush this is a morphe y6 or you can use a beauty sponge. This is a beauty blender, but it is not 100% necessary to have the name brand. I do not recommend Morphe's makeup sponges. I just don't like them because they're too hard and stiff. So if you feel, if you're able to feel the sponge before you purchase it in the package, just give it a little squeeze because what I found is if it's stiff when it's dry, it's gonna be stiff when it's wet. So make sure it's just a softer sponge so when you get it wet, it's nice and soft and you can bounce it you can bounce it nicely on your skin without going super crazy beating your face up. So I'm going to be going in with my hourglass foundation stick. If I use liquid, I will go ahead and put some on my hands and take whatever tool I'm using and blot it on there and then put it on my face, put some more and keep going. What you don't wanna do is pour this all over your tool. You don't wanna pour it all over your face. This is an Instagram, this is real life. You'll waste a lot, a lot, a lot of product. Um, so with the foundation stick, I like to swipe it a couple times on the sides of my cheek. I will also put two swipes here, a swipe here, swipe on my nose. And this isn't exact, I'm just saying make sure that you, you put it on your face, but don't sit here and color this in because if you do that, you're wasting it. This will blend. I also put it down my neck. You want to make sure when you're doing the application, you are blending not only on your face, but you're also blending on your neck and your ears because if there's a slight difference in shade of that foundation from your neck, it's going to be seen. If you have a low cut top on, girl, you better blend it all the way down. So now with a brush, you can either go in and buff it just like this, or you can swipe it, but I recommend that if you're gonna swipe it, you do circular and down, never up, because if you have any dry patches, you can lift them up and it'll make the foundation look patchy and gross. And also you have hair sometimes if you're not a face shaver like I am. So I'm gonna go ahead in here to the ears as well. And also doing this will make sure you don't have that like harsh, you know what I'm talking about? Back when we were in middle school, we didn't know we had to blend it down to our neck and we like put it right at our jawline and you could definitely tell and you know, we were super orange because we wore the wrong freaking foundation, so. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with this side with the beauty blender and this you're just literally going to pounce 100% recommend you using it wet. It is okay to use it dry, but I just feel like you're gonna get more of a beautiful, smoother application if you use it wet and not dry. So what I'm gonna do is just do like I did before on the other side, but I'm going to pounce this all over. You can pounce to push it in, but you can also like pounce and swipe to make sure you get the coverage you need. Okay, so I will be going back in with just one more layer because this is a buildable medium to um, full coverage, so it's a buildable foundation, just because I don't know if you can see it, but you can still see kind of some of the red underneath from my actual skin. And also, I like to, what I usually do, um, if I'm not showing you guys like different ways, I'll go in with the first layer with the brush, and then I will go back through and I literally just do like one or two swipes, not as many as I did the first time because it's not necessary. And then I will go in with the Beauty Blender to finish it out because the Beauty Blender gives it more of a smooth and just flawless finish, um, but the brush is quicker. It's a quicker application. So if you're not trying to sit here pouncing out your foundation or you don't have time, I do recommend the brush but the blender is gonna be much better for somebody who has um, dry skin because you're not irritating your skin. I just don't like using the beauty blender, I'm lazy. So with your foundation, I just wanna give you a few tips before I move on. Just to make sure when you're applying it, you're not putting a crap ton where you have fine lines or wrinkles because too much product is gonna cause that creasing and caking effect. So if I know that I'm gonna put a whole ton of concealer here, I'm not gonna put a whole ton of foundation there. It's a waste and it's too much product and it will cause a lot of creasing and grossness to happen. For those of you who stop here, who don't use blush, who don't use contour, who don't use any of that, um, I'm gonna tell you what you would do next and then for those of you who do, we will do it after I put on all of that stuff. However, I do recommend that you do use other things other than just your foundation because this gives you a very blank, like dull, look. I mean, it's not terrible, but you want to have a little more life to you than 
<laughs> what this gives you. So say you're stopping here, you like this look, this is for you. You're gonna go into your setting powder. Um, there's a lot of different setting powders, but I do say, I do recommend that if you're going to set your foundation, that you set it with a powder foundation. It gives you a lot more coverage. If you don't need any more coverage or you don't like that, then you are more than welcome to use a translucent powder of any kind in any brand. And then you will set it with this. If you're going somewhere, obviously you want to set it so it doesn't budge and all of that. Most of you know how setting spray works, but basically you'll mist it all over, let it dry, mist it again if you need a second one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop off camera and I'm going to add all of my bronzer, blush, highlighter, and all that, and then tell you what I would do if you added all that to your foundation. Um, but I don't want to do it on camera because that's not the focus of my video today. So I'll be right back. Okay, so and now that I went and put everything else on, I am ready to move to the next step, which is going to be setting my foundation and then using my setting sprays. So I'm going to go and do the next step, which is setting my foundation. I usually do that off camera, but because I'm trying to show you guys what I'll do for foundation, I wanna go ahead and do that. Do not mind my hair, because I'm trying to fling it out of my way. So I take a matching foundation, a powder foundation. So this is going to be a powder foundation. This is not a setting powder per se, but I use it as such. So I'll just tap some on there onto a thicker, more dense brush, and then I just tap around where I have the foundation. So I will do it all the way down my neck and all my ears. And then I do not touch my forehead because my forehead now has concealer and bronzer and all that. So basically I put the setting or the powder foundation right in the areas that um, don't get any other powders just because I don't want to use a translucent powder just because you can get like flashback and all that and I feel like it's just more full coverage and especially for your neck area I 100% recommend putting a powder foundation down there because your clothes are going to be rubbing um, unless you're wearing like super low cut or even then if you sweat stuff like that ladies we get like boob sweat you don't want to have all of that happening and your foundation start to break up so I highly 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 recommend setting it with a foundation to make sure that you just have a beautiful base and you're good to go so the last two things to the foundation and how it is applied correctly you're going to take um, you can just do a setting spray but I like to take the prep and prime make sure your mascara is dry because if you do this before it's dry you're going to regret it it will make it run so I just go ahead and spritz it all over my face I know you're probably like oh my god Jamie you look wet so what I do is I go ahead and I let it dry it's gonna take a minute so we're gonna fast forward that and it does take quite a bit for it to dry but when it does it just looks so good and glowy like look at my face I look like I'm glowing and it stays like that like it's almost dry and it's still like that so then after you do that of course you will do your setting spray because you don't want to go out and then like it starts to get hot or you're like hugging people the setting spray is going to help you out. I do like the morphe one but the hands down 100% best that I've ever used is the all-nighter and I have it but that's if you like girl you really don't want it to budge for like all day long I don't want that I'm probably gonna be taking this off right after this video so I'm not going to be putting that one on but that is a really really good one and you can get an Ulta and Sephora and it really makes your makeup last you put your setting spray on so it just keeps everything that you've done in place so that is actually all I have for the beauty breakdown basically I wanted to really break it down for you guys on what you need how you can get your foundation to look the best that you can I can't say flawless because my foundation doesn't look flawless I have textured skin I have fine lines it will never be flawless unless you have flawless skin and in that case then just slap it on your face it doesn't matter it'll look flawless but I want it to make you guys feel as beautiful as you truly are and I hope that these help you I know that all these videos that we produce and content that is provided that sometimes 
even the most simple things that we take for granted as an easy thing to do, you guys might struggle with. And I just wanted to make sure that I broke it down in step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step form. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Leave me like a review of how I did. Do you like these kind of videos? Is it too long? You just wanna see foundation put on? Do you wanna see more detailed beauty breakdowns? Anything that you guys are really looking for in more of a breakdown step-by-step -step tutorial instead of just put your foundation on, put your concealer on. I just wanna make sure I help you guys out. So as always guys, again, a big thumbs up for this video if I did a fantastic job and I will see you on the next one. Bye.